Hey coin collectors and welcome to DC Coin World International Coin Channel. Today we're going to talk about the mystery of the 1977 transitional era Washington Quarter. This is the Washington Quarter right here. Liberty at the top it says, and God we trust under Washington's chin. 1977 down here and then back here we see a smudged D. And that's from the Denver Mint. The Denver Mint in 1977 they made 256 and a half million of them. 256.524 million. So they made a bunch. One of the things that people also talk about in 1977 is the um, 1977 no mint mark error coin. Well, let's talk about the 1977 no mint mark error coin. Here's a 1977 no mint mark coin right here. And as you can see, there is uh, no mint mark behind Washington. And there's a reason for that. In fact, there are 468 and a half million reasons for that because this is a Philadelphia mint coin. And in 1977, they did not put a P on the Philadelphia mint quarters. So there's almost half a billion of these out there. So it's not a, an error of any kind. It's not a no mint mark error. It just doesn't have a mint mark in 1977 on these Philadelphia Mint coins. Well, let's take a look at the quarter and see if we can kind of figure out what's going on here. Well, it is a copper nickel clad copper, the so-called copper sandwich. Um, the outside is a copper nickel and it gets, gives it the shine and the silverish variety. The inside core is all copper. And then if we flip it over, we see that this, of course, is 1977, the eagle on the back of it. And this coin has been essentially the same back since 1932. These coins came out in 1932 on the 200th anniversary of George Washington's birth. And so uh, when this coin came out, uh, it was designed that they picked a John Flanagan design. And you can actually see the J and the F. Let's see if we can get it right. Well, let's, we're going to have a hard time seeing on this one, but I'll show you on one of the other ones. There's a little bump down in here, right in there, right above the... That's a J and an F for John Flanagan. On the back, it says United States of America, E Pluribus Unum. There's an eagle holding a shape of arrows. There is a olive branch here, and at the very bottom it says quarter dollar. It has 119 reeds as you go across the um, bottom of it. Now... And when I keep picking this up, you keep looking behind and you keep saying, well, what, why does this 1776 to 1976, why does it say that here? Why is he using this background? Well, there's a very good reason for that, and I'm going to show you that. All right, so the first thing is, if there's a 1977 um, and it's an error coin, it's a transitional error coin, what were they transitioning from? Well, that's, an, that's the best question, and that's the one you really need to ask. Were they transitioning from silver quarters in 1976 uh, or transitioning to silver quarters in 1978? It turns out, no, they weren't. Um, in fact, here is a silver quarter, and that's how you can tell the difference between... If you ever find a 1977 and it looks like this, you know you have the 1977 transitional error. However, almost all 1977 coins are going to look like this because they are the copper nickel clad copper. All right, so why does it look like this? Well, this one looks like this because it's 90% silver. From 1932 until 1964, they were 90% silver United States quarters. They're worth quite a bit, 3 or $4 just in silver value alone. In 1976, however, they came out with the bicentennial coins. And this is one of those bicentennial coins here. And this, again, is another uh, Denver Mint coin, another messy mint mark, keeping in line with the time. It says Liberty at the top, in God we trust. And then there's the date, 1776 to 1976, the same thing we have here. We, we look, see the D there. They made them in Denver, Philadelphia. And then we tip it up and we see, no, this is not a silver coin. So the 1970 seven coin here is a copper nickel clad copper. The 1976 coin here 
is a copper nickel clad copper. So then again, what is the transition that's going on here? Well, the transition comes from this folder that I have right down underneath here. And I will open it up for you, and you will see that in 1976, the United States Mint provided a United States Bicentennial Silver Proof Set. And guess what? There is a San Francisco Mint Silver Proof Quarter right there in the set. And um, we can kind of pop it out, I think. Let's see if we can. And I will put this kind of back together and then we'll pop it out. And so it comes in its own little um, plastic casing. Make it a little smaller so you can see it. This is just a magnificent coin, as you, as you can tell. Um, we tip it up on stage and guess what? There is 40% silver in this coin. Not the 90% from 1964, but 40% silver. So that's perhaps where we could get a transitional error. We take a 1977 coin. We um, use the old silver that they were using in 1976, and we get a transitional error where the 1977D is printed on a silver, 40% silver planchet. That's where the 1977 error coin comes from. Uh, this is an S coin, and this is silver. Um, but you should also be very aware that there's another S coin, because in 1977, um, they also did a United States proof set, which is this one here, with an S on it. And so there is, this is not a silver S in this proof set. This is a copper nickel clad copper. The silver ones are going to be in the 1977 bicentennial kits. So if you're looking for one, you really need to get one of these kits like this. You may be able to find one that somebody's taken out of the kit, but that's how you're going to get the 1976 silver one. If you get the 1977 silver one, you're going to have been extremely lucky um, because they they um, just made a mistake. Why would they make a mistake? Well, it turns out that they made 11 million of these silver clad ones. They really made a bunch of money selling these. And so they're not really valuable in the sense that um, there's a high quality uh, cost for them. You can get one of these for five to seven dollars probably any day. In an MS or a, a proof 65, it may go as high as eight dollars. But um, they may when you when you make uh, 11 million of the silver, there's two different varieties, but they they made 11 million of this variety, four million of the other. So there's 15 million silvers out there from 1976. There is one that we know, um, silver clad. Uh, transition from 1977 that I'm aware of. All right, well, that's all we have today from DC Coin World International Coin Channel. We'd love to have you subscribe to our channel and leave any comments you might have in the comments section.